Okay, so this lecture is on Bronfenbrenner. And uh, this is the last theorist we're going to discuss for this class. And the next classes are going to be on societal effects on, and parenting effects on the development of children, uh, adolescents, young adults, adults, and end of life. So the last couple classes, we're going to talk about more situational things. Um, there's a lot more flexibility in the topics. And uh, so um, that's the plan. But right now, uh, we are going to talk about Bronfenbrenner's ecological systems theory. And I would like uh, to start with the notes, but then we also have a, uh, a graphic that I included. So Yuri Bronfenberg, Bronfenbrenner, it's a tongue twister, ecological theory. Um, okay, Bronfenbrenner, uh, an American psychologist who maintains a socio-cultural view of development, stressing that complex relationships are influenced by our environment. So it sounds, sounds pretty reasonable. Um, the theory, uh, his theory is, is pretty straightforward. Um, so his theory is considered an environmental theory. Theory is best explained through the use of his diagram, um, which depicts uh, environmental systems. And um, I'm going to go over those, but then, then I'm going to share a screen and we're going to look at the diagram itself. Um, so uh, the individual, of course, that's, that's at the center. All that makes a person unique, the gender, gender identity, sex, age, health, uh, various environmental impacts. Uh, that the individual experienced. Um, I would say everything that has to do with di diversity, um, nature and nurture, kind of what is this person's uh, genetic makeup, you know, all of those things makes an individual who they are and unique. The microsystem, this is the immediate setting in which an individual lives. So family, peers, school, neighborhood, uh, the close contacts, including parents, friends, teachers, um, the immediate uh, contacts. The individual is not passive here, but helps to construct the system settings and the interactions with those people. They're direct interactions and direct influences. The meso system. It's a uh, meso means in between. Um, if you've ever been to the opera or the symphony, they have a, a mezzanine, which is kind of an in-between floor. Um, so it means in between or actually the relationship or connection between systems and contexts. And this can be the relationship between family and school or family and social welfare system, all of the interactions. Um, it could be between systems and often, uh, the interaction between those systems uh, is just as important as non-interaction. So, or non-interaction is just as important as interaction. Um, exosystem. 
So this involves experience in large social settings in which the individual does not have an active role uh, that influences the individual in immediate context. For instance, a job may influence uh, family relationships and have an impact on an adolescent, work, extended family, the neighborhood. This is a larger external system that may have an indirect impact. In the macro system, uh, this is the outermost area and it includes the broad culture of the community, state, or nation. It includes cultural views, behaviors, belief systems passed on to individuals. Cross-cultural studies is the comparison of one culture to another. Um, and then the chronos system. Uh, it adds the depth of time to the chart. This is the thing that I found most interesting. Uh, it includes environmental events over a lifespan on a lot of different levels. Specific events such as a divorce, um, the socio-historical events such as women's ability to pursue a, a career or vote or anything like that. Um, it would definitely impact uh, LGBT, um, marriage, uh, you know, things like that. My friends are, are getting married, whereas before, and there's a lot of implications to that, as you know. So historically, okay, what's going on in the context of time, but also within your life time, what are the major events? So where are you placed in historical context, but also what events happen within your lifetime and at what point in your lifetime? It's very different if, uh, you know, World War II had happened when you were 18 versus 55. Um, he has recently added uh, biological influences to the theory and refers to it as the bioecological theory. And um, so let me uh, share a screen um, so we can see uh, this chart. And um, this might take me a second here. Okay, so hopefully you're able to see this this screen here and um, so you know it's in circles the outer circle is the dimension of time and it encircles everything but if you could imagine this three-dimensionally I would say that it would have depth to it you know um, almost like a cylinder uh, but he just wrapped it around the out, the outside, the chronos. So chrono means time, like uh, a chronograph. Um, cr you know, chronology. Um, so you know, here we have the individual, then we have the microsystem, family, school, peers little larger system in the microsystem, religious affiliations, workplace, neighborhood, the mesosystem, the in-between. We have family, school, peers, religious affiliation, workplace, neighborhood, all of the in how they interact. That's what these little arrows are for, the interaction between the systems. Then we have the exo, 
the outer, um, you know, the economic system, political system, education system, government, religious, all of those things impact us, uh, but it may be, um, maybe on a broader level. You have the macro system, overarching beliefs and values, perhaps more cultural. And then we have dimensions of time, and I would say both within history and within one's own life. All right, that was a pretty simple and straightforward theory. Um, but start thinking about your interview and your questions and going through all of those things. And um, what I would like you to do this week in your discussion post, I would like you to think about uh, how this theory applies to your own life. What are all these influences and how did they impact you uh, at each of these levels? Would you change something? How could the impacts be negative or positive and what could you do to help a client change? So that's kind of the interactive question for your discussion post this week.